Broadcasting now. Hi, everybody. This is Andrew again, live from the Blue Ocean Film Festival, and I have the extreme luck to be having a hangout with various participants from around the world, including downstairs at the Liquid Galaxy display, we have Bob Ballard. Uh, Bob, you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. We're down here uh, doing a virtual tour of the Titanic. Sort of cool. Yeah. Bob, can you give a little background about you know how people might know you, a little bit about uh, what your expertise is? Well, I'm an oceanographer, and uh, with me uh, also is Dr. Katie Croft-Bell. She's the chief scientist of our ship, uh, the EV Nautilus. Both of us are San Diegans. Uh, she went to MIT, got her degree in engineering there, and then master's in archaeology, and she was one of my students. She just got her PhD in geology and geophysics. And uh, Congrats, Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, you know, she's, uh, she's done for now. Now she's got to go raise money. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm here at the uh, Blue Ocean Film Festival. we got a series, uh, uh, Alien Deep, that's up for a number of awards, and Katie's doing all the hard work while I have the fun. So there you are. <laughs> But behind me is a, I'm going to give you a virtual tour here. Uh, this is a very cool interactive display. Um, bow section of the Titanic, so it brings back a lot of memories. So you actually uh, explored the Titanic, didn't you? Well, I, I did it in virtual reality now, but I did it in real uh, several times. We've been off the Titanic a couple times. But this is the bow section. And as I come in on it, you can see the promenade. And then off in the background is the uh, stern section. But the beauty of this, shall I go to the Bismarck? You want to go to that? Well, just talk a little bit more about what it's like to, did you use an ROV when you well, went Well, when, when we first, when we first, uh, we've been to the Titanic with three different vehicle systems. Uh, the first one was the Argo vehicle system, which we used to discover the Titanic in uh, 1985 mm -hmm. and then we came back with our submersible Alvin and actually uh, landed on a number of spots right up here we landed near the grand staircase and then sent a remotely operated vehicle down into the grand staircase and where would that be all uh, right well it would be right about there hey um Bob, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, why why go to the Titanic wreck what is the significance of exploring a sunken ship well, it, it is uh, the iconic shipwreck of the deep. Uh, there's probably more history. Uh, there's probably more history in uh, the deep sea than all the museums of the world combined. So really what we're trying to do is to peop make people aware of the vast amount of history that lies beneath the sea. And actually since finding the Titanic, we've gone on to do a lot of other work. And uh, Katie, can once you give them a little summary of some of the shipwrecks we found just this summer? Sure. Well, we have found, uh, so to give you, I got quite the introduction there from Bob. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so now I work for the Ocean Exploration Trust running the exploration vessel Nautilus, which is a vessel that's currently based in the Mediterranean. We've been working there in the Mediterranean Sea, the Black Sea, the Aegean for the past several years. And as Bob mentioned, we've found quite a lot of archaeological sites, historical sites, um, in one very small area off the coast of Turkey. We got up to uh, Knidos Z. So when we don't know what a shipwreck is, we just name it A, B, C, D, all the way you know, down the alphabet, and we got to Z this year huh. after about five years of exploring in the area. And those are all actually ancient shipwrecks, um, ranging in age from, oh, pre, you know, uh, Thousands, thousands and thousands of years, right. one two thousand BC up through um, up through modern times. There's actually one vessel, one sailing ship that we found that looked very, very modern. Looked like it might have gone down yesterday. Wow! Um, so yeah, it was a little scary. We haven't we haven't quite figured out um, what the history on that one is. So but when it's you're absolutely doing, fascinating how much we've found. So, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. When you're doing your uh, your exploration of these uh, shipwrecks, is there uh, a, any type of way that the you know viewing public out there can actually see this sort of thing? That's a great question. Yes, there is. So we have the remotely operated vehicles that go down to the seafloor. We don't go down ourselves. It's nice. We can stay up on the ship, dry, have a cup of coffee, um, send the robots down to do the exploring. 
Um, but we work on the vessel and we have a satellite dish on board. So we're able to send all the video, audio, all this data back to shore to the Inner Space Center here in Rhode Island. And then it gets distributed out to universities, schools, boys and girls clubs, um, museums and aquariums, just like the Titanic Belfast Museum where um, Susan works, and um, to your very own home laptop. So 24 hours a day while we're exploring, you can be exploring with us if you go to our website nautiluslive.org. You can not only watch what we're doing, but also interact with us, participate in the exploration. There's the ability to write in questions, and our exploration team, the scientists and the engineers who are on the ship, will respond to those questions in real time. That's sort great. of like this, but we can't see you. you can see us. <laughs> well, maybe uh, Hangouts are something to use later. Um, Susan, actually, that's a great segue over to you. Can you introduce yourself and uh, tell us about the uh, Belfast uh, Titanic Museum? I can indeed, guys, and I've got about 30 seconds here. I've been really pushed for time, unfortunately. I'm the Ocean Exploration Center Manager at Titanic Belfast, which is the biggest Titanic visitor attraction in the world. And we've been very lucky that Dr. Ballard and Katie have agreed to be our sort of our research partners. And uh, we broadcast their expeditions live in the Ocean Exploration Center as well. So, wow. uh, before you have to leave, uh, for those who don't know, why is there a museum for the Titanic in Belfast? Building. <laughs> well, that's where they built it. Well, Titanic, Titanic was built in Belfast, and at the time, it was the largest movable man-made object on the planet. And what we do is we literally we're celebrating the feat of engineering that it was at that time. Well, that's great. Is there any way that people can get more information about you and your organization? Yeah, if they want to check the website, it's titanicbelfast.com. And we'd love to see them come visit or even email us some questions. That sounds great. Well, I know that you have to get going because you're at your own conference. Uh, so if you need to you know, head out, feel free. I'm going to throw it back to Bob. Bob looks like he's got another great aspect for us. Yes, actually we're looking right now at the, uh, the battleship Bismarck. After finding the Titanic, we took on the Bismarck. And uh, it's in much better shape than the battleship, <laughs> although... When it sank, it went in upside down, dropped all its main guns. But uh, our discovery run, I was going to try to simulate our discovery run. When we first came in on the uh, Bismarck, we came in literally on those guns. Scared the heck out of us. Uh, the first thing we saw were these guns sticking out of, right at us. So, uh, yeah, the Bismarck is in a lot better shape. It still has swastikas painted on its uh, bow and stern. But it's uh, remarkably in good shape. So, um, hi, I'm Jennifer Folks, and I manage Google's Oceans program, and we are delighted to have uh, Bob Allen here with us here at the Blue Ocean Film Festival. Before you leave the Bismarck, yep. um, right. I wanted to just share that that is a SketchUp model that one of our colleagues in Boulder made with uh, some imagery, and if Bob has better images from the exterior of the model, we can update the model to improve it so that it's more realistic from his actual dives, and I think... Um, this is a great tool to allow anyone who wants to learn about the ocean or teach their kids uh, about the ocean to take them there virtually and get a sense of what it looks like on the bottom of the seafloor. Because so few people, Bob's one of the only ones who has actually been to these deep places. So I should also mention that with SketchUp itself, uh, anybody out there who has this type of imagery or has, uh, at, you know, can actually see. Uh, both buildings on land and shipwrecks on in water can actually build their own models and upload those to the uh, 3D warehouse. And eventually they'll end up uh, viewable by everywhere. Uh, Jennifer, do you want to talk about where people can actually see these models? Yes, so in the um, Earth Gallery, which you can search for online, if you search for Google Earth Gallery, there is a model of our 3D wrecks and 3D objects in the ocean. We have several other shipwrecks as well, like the Cornelia in um, Big Thunder Bay. So, um, and we're always looking to feature more models. So, as people create more models of more shipwrecks, we'd like to bring the ocean alive through um, these virtual modeling techniques. I'm going to zoom in on Katie right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Katie, we're going to come down to where she is. She's over here at uh, Graduate School of Oceanography in the University of Rhode Island, and she's at the Inner Space Center. So, right, there's Narragansett Bay. <laughs> Here we go, Katie. And this is a very updated image. I was just looking at it. It's, it's uh, uh, April 3rd this year. So right now oh, there wow. is the Inner Space Center building that Katie's inside. Right there. 
Yeah, the liquid galaxy display. I'm looking for your car in the parking lot, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I sold it. <laughs> So the Liquid Galaxy display is actually running the Google Earth engine, and uh, what's great about that is that you can actually zoom anywhere in the world, and again, with the Oceans program, underwater, and see various aspects, including these sunken ships, and uh, again, on land, there are a lot of 3D rendered buildings and 3D rendered aspects. You can actually see the various uh, you know, topography of mountain ranges and what have you. And even underwater, you can see underwater mountains and uh, trenches and just explore various places in the ocean. I can also, so show, have... you, I can also show you my horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we have terabytes that. and terabytes of high definition underwater video. Is there there's some way that we can right get that into Google Earth? <laughs> no, there's definitely a way. And uh, there's an uh, aspect. Of... Are my horse. <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely ways to do that, Katie. And for anybody at home uh, who sees this, or any ocean explorers, or anybody who deals with the ocean, you can uh, actually go to uh, a website that's associated with uh, Sylvia Earle, the Mission Blue. Uh, and it's known as the deepness, and if you have those aspects uh, lat-long based, uh, you can actually so, upload those. Yep, that's true, and, and I, I want to ask Bob, where does he want to go next in the ocean? Oh, I can tell you where we're going to go next. I zoom out. <laughs> uh, right. Bob's having a lot of fun with the liquid galaxies. I think he yeah. wants one of these at the Inner Space Center. I'm just... Actually, we're gonna... I want one of these in my home. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Let me, let me get you a, a right orientation. Uh, we're gonna so be, Donald's is going to be cruising across the Atlantic this spring. That's right. We're going to be going to the Caribbean Sea, a uh, Caribbean, <laughs> and uh, we're going to probably start off the year uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. I drummed up some business here, Katie. I need to talk to you about. Oh, good. <laughs> we'll have to talk next week. We're going to be working in the Gulf of Mexico, and then we're going to be going down to the Cayman Trough, the deepest volcanoes on the Earth. Wow. Right down here, this is where I made my my deepest dive at 21,000 feet, right in that guy. And then, uh, right here, the Cayman Trough. Can you actually go and show us this? Yeah, this is a Cayman Trough. It's a, it's a leaky transform fault. It thinks it's in a San Andreas, but it's it's opening, so it's got also active volcanoes. Is, is that a subduction point, or is that, what what is that? No, that's where two plates are moving. Sort yeah, no, no. I... Sort of like the San Andreas Fault. Um, okay. But it's it's a leaky transform fault, so there's magma that that's coming up and creating hydrothermal vents. There are tons of amazing things there. They, another vessel similar to the Nautilus, the Okeanos Explorer, has been exploring there since last year. And so, so that's Bob, one of the places that we're going to be headed in 2013. Yay! Well, Bob just said he has better data. Um, I have much better maps of this, and uh, also <laughs> uh, we're putting a new sonar on the ship. Uh, right now in Istanbul that they'll be doing a very detailed mapping. It's the same one that's on the on the uh, Valcor. Valcor. It's yeah. the uh, Kongsberg uh, EM302, which has a one, one degree by one degree beam, so it'll be very accurate. And so we're going to spend at least a year uh, here in the Caribbean Sea. Uh, Can you zoom in a little bit? It's a little hard to see on our end. This is there where the go. plates are colliding. This is uh, a big uh, collision zone between the Caribbean plate and the North American plate, and all of these active volcanoes here. That's your subduction area. This is yeah, where so. subducting. There's a place yeah, called Pickham exactly. Jenny that we want to explore. So we're going to be pretty busy in the Caribbean, but right now, I was looking for the ship. Well, do you remember, Katie, where it was uh, November of last year? Was it in the November? shipyard? Was it in the shipyard? No, not yet. It was probably in Bodrum. All right, I'm going to go November of last year. Although we were operating through mid-November last year, so it might no. have still been at sea. November 11th. Look it that up. That might have been in Israel then. Israel. Okay, because this says on this database, okay, we were in Israel then. All right, let's go to Israel. We might have been. That was around the time we were ending the cruise, and it ended a couple days early. Were we in Haifa? That that were we in Haifa? Big storm that rolled in. Oh, uh, Haifa. You can go to look in Haifa. Yeah. Let's look at the harbor. It was now. either import or might have been offshore. I'm not sure exactly. All right. Well, and I would just like to say that if if Bob has any greater bathymetric underwater terrain data that we could publish in Google Earth to make the maps better, we would be happy to take any new data that would make our maps better and make them a better place to put in 3D models of shipwrecks or information uh, for education. We'd love that. 
Jennifer, can you talk a little bit while he's trying to find that where uh, how uh, the actual topography underwater is generated? Well, ours is uh, is a hull mounted uh, array. It was developed uh, during the Cold War, actually. I call the the Harris array, and it's a it's a transducer at right angles to a receiver, and it sends out a signal at 12 kilohertz. It's like a, 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 a fan of energy, and then that fan bounces off the bottom, it comes back, and it's then received by uh, hydrophones that are perpendicular, and they're able to divide the returning signal up into a series of one degree by one degree boxes, and then a, a depth in each of those boxes. And the Navy system has 90 beams, Wow. Uh, I think the one we're getting has 30 some beams and those then are with the navigation system as they move along they're able to actually <laughs> contour a bathymetric map in real time at full speed so it's a wonderful way of uh, in fact in some of your databases it looks like they've got track lines on here that uh, are already entered into your database and we do and we basically have uh, many many partners who have contributed data to our bathymetric map a terrain map of the oceans. So the global grid is curated by scripts at UCSD. And then we have high resolution contributions from the Lamont Doherty Columbia University synthesis. And as you go around, if you want to show some of the high res data, there's Davidson Seamount of Monterey, there, right, anywhere where you have the track I, line. I think the Okeanos is Indonesia data is in there too, Bob. I can, I'll go no, Monterey. that process is much technology as you explain. It still sounds like magic. <laughs> it's like a whole bunch of fish finders put together. And from Monterey Bay Canyon, we have um, data from Imbari, CSU Monterey Bay, and Davidson Seamount. As you fly into it, you will see it looks so much more beautiful right, because we'll be it's from ships. So, Jennifer, can you actually explain for, to us, uh, for those of us who don't know, what is Imbari? So, Imbari is the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. Mm -hmm. And it's based right near here in Moss Landing, and they have ships and collect bathymetric data just as Bob does in his cruises. And we take in that data and publish it, so integrate it into our global map to basically bring the ocean alive. And what you see right here is Davidson Seamount, and Bob is taking us there. And as you go underwater, you'll see that the map looks so much better. We only have a small percentage of the ocean in this high resolution, which is about 100 meters. And that's about maybe 7% of the ocean, because most of the ocean is still unexplored. You know, that's actually something very interesting. Uh, I heard a statistic here at the festival that we actually know way more about the surface of Mars and the surface of the moon than we do about our own oceans. So are there any particularly exciting places, Bob, that you would like to go map? Yes. <laughs> Tell us where. I, I, I'll show you where I want to go. I mean, after we get uh, done with the Caribbean, we want, let me get this guy cooperating, we'll zoom across the uh, Pacific Ocean over to, uh, there's a whole bunch of places to work. Uh, but clearly. Can you I'll, zoom I'll, in a little bit, Bob? I'm going to zoom in on the Marianas Backhart Basin. Great. This is the this is another uh, subduction zone where the Pacific plate is crashing into the Eurasian plate, and you'll see this arc shape. You, you don't get straight lines on globes, so you get curved lines. And this is where the plate is subducting, and then this is the islands it's making, and then behind it is what is called the back arc basin, and that's where you actually get a lava coming back up. So. This is a part of what's called the Ring of Fire, and this has amazing diversity of marine life. So we're, we want to go, we're going to base the ship uh, probably here in, in Guam, Let's go into Guam, and then that's the, that's the shipyard, that this is a Navy base we hope to base the Nautilus in uh, for quite a number of years in Guam, and then uh, because it's right near the battlefield. So this is where we want to work. This is one of the most complex areas of the planet because if you look at this area, it doesn't make sense. And when, so? things, and when things don't make sense, uh, geologists love to go go there. Bob, what do you mean by it doesn't make sense? Well, it's just a bunch of junk, you know. I mean, just look at all that. You know, it's just ups and downs, and it's a very complex area of the planet. It's the center of marine biodiversity on the planet. 
Whereas if you go to the Atlantic and look at it, it's pretty you know, boring. <laughs> Watch out, you might offend some people who really love the Atlantic. Well, C, C is pretty simple. You got a continental shelf, continental shelf, continental slope, continental slope, continental rise, continental rise, abyssal plain, abyssal hills. You know, it's just sort of there it is. And you can sort of predict what you're going to see when you go there. Why is there so much data here? We have a lot of scientific data. Because all the wars are fought there. Uh, everyone lives in the Northern Hemisphere. And so everyone cares about the Northern Hemisphere, and the Navy's mapped the living juniors out of this area because it was a battlefield. So uh, most of the unexplored part of the planet is go to polar projection. Ah. The Pacific, let me get that back up. Let me I can zoom in and get you back up here. The Pacific is a third of the planet. There we go. Look at that. You can almost see wow. blue. So, I mean, that is planet ocean, and that's where we want. And you see it's very complicated. It sort of doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. This is a hot spot. We know we know it changed direction. But this area is very hard to figure out, and so it has a high discovery potential. So we want to go to a place that we don't understand. So that's where we're headed, right there. Hey, Bob, uh, while I still got you here, uh, you're playing around with the Liquid Galaxy. How do you like it as a presentation tool or as an education tool? Well, I'm thrilled that you're giving us one. I think it's really marvelous, and uh, we will uh, promise to show a lot of people it will be your best advertisement. Now, I give you the P.O. box you can send it to. <laughs> Chen, for you're laughing quite a bit about that. Yeah, well, we... I'm ready to take delivery of it, and I... if you give it to me, I'll carry it on the road with me, all right? I've gone to every house I've ever lived in in the last two days. <laughs> Want to see where I went to high school? <laughs> well, well, we we um we have really focused on building out ocean tours in the Liquid Galaxy so that we can bring all of this ocean data that we've partnered with so many organizations on to anyone in museums. We have just uh, worked with the Santa Cruz Ocean Center uh, in Santa Cruz up the road here to put one in there, um, and there's a tour of the Monterey Bay Sanctuary. And I think it would be great if we had one at your inner space center, Bob. I think you, we get lots of it. And we also have uh, the largest tourist attraction in the New England, or in the state of Connecticut at Mystic. 750,000 visitors. I promised to demonstrate it to all of them. So this ship one will take it. I'm looking for my high school right now. So you're really right now just a spokesperson for your hometown. That's what's going on. <laughs> And then, and then we would love to take any bathymetric data or imagery so that we can bring the oceans to a few places that you that have been explored, uh, particularly by you, uh, to the to everyone in the world through this tool and platform. Jennifer, is there any way that people who aren't ocean explorers who maybe take photos of the ocean or maybe sometimes go underwater scuba diving and take photos, is there any way that they can uh, give us imagery and share their love of the ocean? Yes, we have a consumer site called Panoramio that is for place photos, both underwater and on land. And you can create an account with a Gmail account and then put in all of your photos and join our underwater photos group. So scuba divers or um, explorers anywhere can add their photos to start to annotate um, the ocean. But we need more shipwrecks. People love shipwrecks. We have a lot. Shipwrecks are fantastic. We have a lot. We have about 50 in the Mediterranean. Hey, uh, Katie, have you had a chance to try out anything like SketchUp with uh, some of these shipwrecks you've seen? I haven't, actually. Um, but we have a whole really lot of data. So maybe we should link up with some of your engineers. Well, yeah, and uh, you know, we can do uh, another Hangout where uh, we can walk people through that. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, we have. So it's not just shipwrecks. We have underwater volcanoes. We have all sorts of cool stuff. This year we found fossilized whale bones. They're, yeah, yeah we weren't expecting that either. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I know that everybody has things that they have to go to. The film festival still has quite a few events that people need to go to, and uh, I'm fairly sure Bob's people will hate me if I uh, keep him here for too much longer. Uh, so is there any last aspect that you want to check out, Bob, that ha is underwater? Well, I can, you know, I, I'll, I'm going to be here uh, after you sign off. I have a lot of fun. <laughs> well, yeah, wait till we get in here if you are this yeah. is where you want to see where we found hydrothermal vents? Yes. All right. No yeah. Problem.
So, uh, Katie, uh, with the hydrothermal vents, are you seeing like a lot of thermo fills there? What type of life are you seeing down there? Um, we're seeing, uh, well, actually, there are two different kinds of life that we found in the Mediterranean. Um, in some cases, like the Aeolian Arc, this is the volcanic area near Italy, we found tube worms, which is kind of what we expect, where, which have been found in other hydrothermal um, locations. This is where water is seeping down into the Earth's crust, getting superheated by magma that's close to the surface and coming back out. And then these chemosynthetic organisms, bacteria, tube worms, Clams, in some cases, are living off the heat and the chemicals coming out of the earth. Um, but in other cases, we um, have explored the underwater volcano Colombo, which is um, a sort of small volcano near Santorini, which you might have heard of in Greece. Completely Those submerged. Those are beautiful, and I need to go there at some point. Santorini is gorgeous. I highly recommend it. Colombo you can't see because it's underwater, but it's a lot more active right now than Santorini is. And it's sort of like a punch bowl shape. At, in the very deepest, it's 500 meters. At the, at, the, at the most shallow, it's only 12 meters deep. So there's no circulation between the hydrothermal fluids that are coming out of the seafloor and the surrounding water. Wow. And what's happened is it's lowered the pH significantly, so it's... Um, very high carbon dioxide concentrations down there, and there's nothing living except for all sorts of different kinds of bacteria. So we have orange and yellow and white and gray, all these different kinds of bacteria living there, but no fish, no tube worms, none of the other organisms that we typically see in these sort of um, mineral-rich and nutrient-rich environments in other places of the world. So it's absolutely fascinating. We have tons of imagery from Colombo. It would be fantastic to have a 3D rendering of it and going down and seeing these high hydrothermal vents that stand 10 feet high, 10, 20 feet high. It would be very cool to add to, to Google's um, underwater tour. Well, definitely we'll uh, try to connect you with the right people to get that up, and definitely one of them is down there trying to find the right spot. <laughs> uh, how are you guys doing over there at the Liquid Galaxy? So uh, Bob's just taking us to some hydrothermal vents uh, north of the Galapagos that he's explored before. Yeah, I don't know why it's not. Yeah, we maybe they don't have the data loaded up. Yeah, I think we'll probably sometimes Earth needs rebooting, so um, so we'll just have to uh, have another hangout. <laughs> Show some of the educational content. All the little circles that you see underwater are content from various contributors, like what's whole um, Noah. Scripts, all the ocean exploration groups, and you can basically put a little photo, video story about what you found there, what has been discovered there. We've worked with the Ridge program and featured a ton of their hydrothermal vent research in partnership with Columbia's Lamont Dory Labs. So it's a great tool to start to annotate the ocean, and we look forward to highlight more um, from uh, Katie, your and Bob's explorations. Wow! Look at all that. Okay, so uh, so with that, I think we could endlessly explore the ocean. We want to thank Bob and Katie for joining us as we wrap up here at the Blue Ocean Film Festival. Thank you, Bob. My pleasure. Having lots of fun. <laughs> and with that, Andrew, thank you for hosting. And um, everyone here, um, Amber, Mira, Matt, who helped uh, produce this hangout, and uh, look forward to seeing you. There we are. And... Uh, I just want to say uh, we will definitely love to see all that imagery up. And for all of you watching at home uh, at the Blue Ocean Film Festival, we really, really love all this attention we're getting, and we're having some great times here. And next time, you should all come down. So this is Andrew signing off. See you again. Bye.